sweet. <laughs> Last time I borrowed this guy's dump trailer, um, the battery was dead in the pump. So to dump it, I had to get the tractor around somehow, or I jumped off my truck. I don't remember what I did, but it was a pain in the butt. But anyway, it's working this time. So this is load one. My wife's gonna fuss when she gets home and this is piled up right where we walk. But at the same time, it's right where it needs to be because it's going in the goat pen. I'm gonna go back and try to get at least one more load, maybe two today, if everything's going well. I gotta get fuel, but otherwise everything's going really good. Uh, and I'll just try to put them over thereabouts somewhere so they're all right here close to the goat pen where we need them. I might put one or two out in the orchard, uh, actually, because this is probably one more here by the goat pen, and then if I get another one, put it out by the orchard, because that's really where it needs to go to, to get it chipped in. So anyway, cool, exciting stuff. Let's go back for more. <clears throat> okay, so ended up with just two loads of wood chips yesterday. The um, second load obviously dumped off here by the first. I went ahead and dumped them both right up front by the goat pen. I was thinking that um, one pile might not quite be enough to chip everything that we want to in the goat pen, but realistically, I'll show you here in a second. I've already chipped half of the milk pen over half of it, and all that I've used up was basically from here around the side a little bit on this big pile so we very well may have enough out of one pile it's not that big of a deal if i need to move it i'll move it with the tractor but i wanted to put more here closer um versus having to go somewhere and shovel it up with the tractor and then shuttle it over here to dump it and then wheelbarrow it again so anyway two nice piles and then i'll take you here and show you <clears throat> i think i've showed you before but even here it's all scattered on the ground we just put these wood chips down on top you have to have a solid base first I see a lot of people asking about, you know, filling in gullies and washes and stuff with chips. I wouldn't do that. Um, you have to have a solid packed base first. We put them down because when this dirt gets wet, it doesn't, it's not like you're sinking up to your ankles, although eventually you would be, but it's just slick. It's a slick, you fall down. So we're just putting the chips as a top dress, putting in a couple of inches of chips in here. You have to chip the pen, I don't know, maybe once a year. Um, but then with of the course the goats always being on it, pooping and peeing on it, it's gonna really help it break down. They don't scratch it like chickens to really stir it. Um, but anyway, it'll still help for sure. It'll help it decompose. And then like I say, you know, maybe once a year we'll come in here and we'll just fork out the pens and, um, and then put in fresh chips. You know, really not sure yet. I haven't, the only one that we would have that experience with would be <laughs> what was the milk pen out front and now I just dumped a bunch more chips on it. So I wasn't really planning on forking it out um, I was actually hoping to just plant a garden right where it is, but I don't know. Like I said, now that I put all the chips on there, I'll have to see. I have to get them cleaned up before I plant something there. So anyway, I've got to get this one chipped in. Obviously, the little, the other holding pins, we'll try to get some chips in those. Not as urgent, just because we're not in and out of those pins as much. Um, but this one is currently the milk pin, and in a couple of weeks, hopefully, is going to be the nursery pin with Miss Callie. So anyway, I'm going to get a few more loads in here. I'm just doing it with wheelbarrows. Get them all dumped in here to fill out that back corner. Hit it with a garden rake just to kind of knock it down and level it out. And then I'm going to turn the, the does back out into it. Right now I've got them pinned up there in here in the barn. And <clears throat> just, uh, just to keep them out of the way. Plus she's super pregs and I don't want her to you know get stressed out anyway. So they're just in here just to keep them out of the way. i got about 10 more minutes of running with the wheelbarrow. And then I'll be able to turn them out. Anyway, just figured I'd show you what I was doing with it. I think I've talked about that before, but just so you guys know. Sorry, I didn't get any footage for you of actually loading the chips, but again, not that exciting. Just a skid loader. Um, and yeah, definitely <laughs> definitely had some excitement uh, going to get them on the second load. My truck ran out of fuel, which it was said it had plenty. So I got another problem there, but I broke down just as soon as I got on, the, just trying to get on the freeway, leaving the house, I ran out of fuel. So that set me back a little bit yesterday i was thinking about getting a third load but realistically i don't think there was quite enough material there to justify a third load run anyway um so i just once we got the truck fixed i said oh that's fine we'll just shut it down so i only got two loads of chips and actually yesterday afternoon i got two loads of uh two more loads of the composted cow manure for my neighbor which i'll have to show you a little bit more about that because that's super exciting too anyway all in chips nothing special so <clears throat> one of our biggest battles in the goat pen and I've mentioned this to you guys before is we have water that we'll want to get in here and just keep things wet when we get a big hard rain in this house there's actually a little bit of standing water on the floor which of course the goats hate wet feet <coughs> so we're constantly battling that trying to figure out how to get them up get them dry keep them dry 
Uh, so what I'm working on today, see the issue is it sheds off the driveway right there and it runs down through here and it just, it gets blocked off over here. It doesn't drain over like it should. It doesn't drain back out that way like it should. So it all just kind of gets in here and then tries to work its way around, which we haven't had a big heavy rain since we redid the goat pens. So I really don't know what it's going to do now. I'm trying to kind of get ahead of it. So what I'm trying to do today is I've cleaned out this back alley forked up all this lovely compost material um, and I'm actually going to dig down underneath the edges of this house here which this was the first goat pen ghost house goat house we ever built I'm going to dig down under the edges of it I'm going to try to raise the whole thing you see we got a pretty steep roof pitch I'm going to try to raise the whole thing gosh I'll, I mean I could take it up as much as a foot I'll shovel out all the manure and stuff from the inside and then I'll replace it all with wood chips inside and outside so even if we do get a big heavy rain, the wood chips will be enough to keep them up above it, even until we figure out the rest of our drainage problems. So for right now, I've shoveled out all this compost. I'll shovel out all that, which is really hard to do because, man, it just, it's so fibrous. It packs and it locks together, especially the dry stuff. Um, but I'll get it out of there. There's a piece of plywood under here somewhere <laughs> that we threw in there a long time ago. But I'm also shoveling out the dirt on the back side because, see, we, when we put the house in, then we threw a bunch of dirt up against it just to kind of try to raise this area. And you can see the mud line. I'm still not, that's where the level was. I've dropped down about four inches and I'm still not quite underneath the edge. So I'm just going along, digging a trench, going to find the bottom. And then I'll just get a pry bar underneath of it and pick the whole house up, put it up on some blocking um, to where it's way up above the current grade. And then we'll chip it all back in. That's the plan anyway. All right. We've got the first part of the lift started. Um, looking down here, that's already up about four inches. I mean, heck, you can see the mud line was on the post, and now you can see down underneath of it. I got the house shoveled out. I got that board taken out. I didn't think I'd ever see that piece of plywood again, but we found it. Um, so now I'm just going to try to work my way along the back here, and I've got to be real careful as I'm picking up. I was using the shovel to kind of break it loose. But obviously you don't want to do that too much and bend the tip off your shovel. But I've got a pry bar and some blocking. But what I was going to show you is just looking down the roof line here, you can already see how it's how it's twisting. Right? So you can see that this corner is up and it kind of twists down that way. So I'm going to try to go to the other. I'm going to walk my way down the edge here. But I'm going to try to get directly to the other corner and get it up first and see if we can't, or get it up next, see if we can't lift the whole wall just by lifting the ends and not have to try to work down the middle because that's not working very well so i'm gonna go work on the opposite corner and see if i can get it picked up okay well there you go it ain't perfect and it ain't pretty but it's a barn <laughs> remember that so we've got it up now gosh six eight inches i mean the posts the post was sitting down here in the mud this post was down here <laughs> Yeah, at least six inches. I'm going to say closer to eight inches. Well, there's the stack of blocks I put into the other corner. So I've just blocked the two corners. I didn't block in between. I don't really know that I need to. I mean, at, at the end of the day, it's a pallet. And it's very sturdy, just with as many boards as it has nailing across. I mean, I can put shims underneath those feet just to kind of help brace it up. I may go dig out a bunch of um, scraps from the pile. But here's kind of your tattletale here, too, as far as how high we raised it. This... These two little inch and a quarter screws were all that was really holding this pallet in place. Otherwise, it just kind of is, is sitting here freely. Um, but it acts as the, you know, the front corner of it acts as a post, basically here to hold up the front corner of the roof. So all that attaches this roof here to the main frame of the rest of this little pallet house is a couple of toenail screws going right up there through, there's one, going right up through that header board into the beam of the pallet. So because I've kind of picked up on the back end yes i kind of put some torque on those screws but in the grand scheme of things it's very minimal bend that i put on it not even enough to break them um but the point is i've raised this house up now eight inches so i can walk in there easier i'm going to chip it really well um the important thing is i'll now be able to wood chip the house and i'll be able to chip this alleyway and won't have either one of them flooding the other one that's that's the whole idea anyway of course long term we'll build a lean-to off of here that'll actually extend out past where this house goes and then we'll have eight foot lean-tos all the way around the barn and none of this will matter but until that's done this matters very much 
So let me see if I can find some more scraps like this. I'll shim underneath the post just because it seems like a good practice, at least under the middle post. Oh, but the middle post is right by the T post where I have to dig for a corner post. Mm, I don't know, whatever. I'll shim it up, but I want to get it chipped. I want to get all that out of the pen today, get all this cleaned up and done. So when my wife gets home this evening, it looks pretty and she's happy. All right, well, I think I've done enough for today. Oh, there's our train right on time. So whittling down the pile pretty good. I probably went through half of it already, actually, just about. But you can see now how I've got their house chipped. I like that a lot better. It will settle and pack a little bit, but there's probably at least six to eight inches of chips in there throughout most of it. Um, I need to fork that down right there on the outside. That'll help if any rainwater does blow in, it'll run back out. The walk path here on the outside of their house is actually a little bit less. Um, you can see it right along the base of the barn there, it actually gapped. That's what I'll, I was trying to keep it from really touching the barn, but anyway, it's a little bit lower than it is in their house. So the rainwater is going to shed off the upper barn roof. It might jump to the lower one in heavy rain, but mostly it falls straight off here uh, into the walk path. Uh, and then hopefully just drain off somewhere else and not flood out their little shanty here. That's really the idea. If it runs on out here, no big deal. So anyway, chipped their shanty. I could throw some more in there if I wanted to. Chipped all this walk path and around the corner there, I just filled in a low spot. And then I took them just a little bit around the corner on that side too. And of course got the whole milker pin chipped out too. So I think that's enough for today. I mostly just want to get this stuff done because this is where when my wife has to come out and do the chores or myself. But when we come out to do the chores, this is the primary area that gets walked on. So we really like to keep it um, maintained as best we can just so it's not quite so squishy and nasty. Um, and yeah, I don't know. Maybe this evening I'll get to haul in some more around the corner and do the rest of the alleyway. But for right now, I feel like taking a break. And um, I think this will be enough to make the wife happy anyway. Maybe she'll do the rest while I'm gone for... A little while for work but if not she's at least set up to stay dry while i'm gone